Who is a 10 and why? The answers may be darker than you think. Ask everyone to rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10. So let's do that. 10. 10. 10. <laughs> 10. Were you a 10 last time? Yeah, I was a 10 okay. last time. Billy Ray. I feel like I'm a 6.7. Why the f would you ever say something like that? Physically, or what's really going on here? Why do they say 10 when they know other people don't agree? I can think of four reasons. I'll do the easy ones first. Yeah, but what would you say in a situation like this? I mean, you can say that, uh, you can say a high number and you seem conceited, full of yourself, or uh, delusional. If you say a low number, then you might come off as insecure, or could be doing some kind of self deprecating, uh, bragging, which might come up, which might result in you being even more unlikable. I guess you can uh, try to say a middle number. What's the point in that? <laughs> I guess you can try to make a joke like, you know, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm one or something like that. Uh, otherwise, you can try to get out of it and it's like, oh, I don't care. But if you actually care, then it's not really honest. Then people, people know it's like, you know, I don't care about money. I don't care about looks. Hmm. First, the last one will take some time to get into. I'm going to show you psychological research, new communication skills, and how to recognize struggles for status and power. But now let's get back to dealing with these status mm -hmm. games in the shortest form I can manage. So what's up with this whole I'm a 10 thing anyway? Sometimes they say confidence is attractive. What does that mean? This is a really common argument. It seems to mean that if one girl says I'm awesome and another girl says I'm only kind of awesome, that men will like the first one more. Let's try that out for ourselves. Listen again and see who you like more. Okay, we'll start with you, go ahead. 10. 10. I feel like I'm a 6.7. So I don't know about you, but this didn't do much for me. I didn't feel anything positive about the three that said 10. In fact, I thought it was a red flag. It a little bit depends on the culture. Because in, in subcultures, I mean, I guess uh is is from it as well. I mean, also, like saying it just straight up is not gonna get you status. And she kind of comes off as modest, which I guess is something that I, I kind of share with him. And uh, Protestant ethics, or I don't know, something like that. <laughs> A red flag. But when she said 6.7, I went, oh, she's actually reasonable. Maybe she would be fun to talk to. Maybe this actually worked for you. I don't know, but it's not a great strategy, is it? That can't explain its popularity. So what about delusion? Social media gives women a lot of access to attention, and it changes how they feel about themselves and how they feel about other people in real life. But they can't all believe they're here. That's not how math works. So what if they're saying it, but they don't believe it? Fake it till you make it applies to more than just the job market. A strategy that some women use is to pursue a high value man and allow him to keep her in this area on the off chance. Yeah, but like, suppose that she genuinely believed that she was like a two, right? I mean, what would she gain if she said it? It's not great, right? Chance that she might make it here one day. Although the chances mm -hmm. of that are pretty low. I told a story about that in my original Zones video. I gave an Uber ride to a girl who was uh, here with a guy who was seeing four other girls and her. And she asked me, how do I get him to pick me? And I said, how do you make yourself more valuable than four other girls? And she got real quiet. So sometimes I'm a 10 is probably just the same old strategy. But I see something else going on here. I think everyone is a 10 is sometimes a tactic for hiding or reducing hidden conflicts. This is my newest chart. It's called Who is a 10 Status Games. And it's about how men and women seek status differently. I'm going to go over the research behind it. But first, I'm going to show you the different parts of the chart. First of all, these illustrations are how men and women compete for social status. Men compete openly through direct competition and open contests. I would say just more openly. There are a bunch of sneaky, backstabby bitches among the guys. Especially, this would be more common in uh, collectivist cultures and in cities. And women uh, play nice and engage in self-protective behavior. They, they value the appearance of equality while keeping their conflicts quiet. These speech bubbles and arrows are examples of things that men and women might do to increase their own status or to decrease the status of somebody else. These 1 to 10 scales are status, not attraction. They are related, but they're not the same thing. These Bam. Very elaborate. Columns on the side are examples of things that men might do to increase their own status, and these are things that women might do to increase theirs. Finally, at the bottom, I have a key for what the different types of tactics are. Self-inflation, tearing down, flattery, delusion, sabotage, accusation, comparison, and cooperation. Right. So what is status and why does it matter? Well, status is basically the way that other people perceive you and treat you. Over here, I have a typical money guy clutching his money. Uh, he's at the, at the top of the of the. I'm not that status sensitive. I kind of annoying that most of status is just make Billy bullshit or what you kind of have, but you didn't earn. Like, oh yeah, I was giving money by my daddy. That's my claim to status, or, or, or right there, my dad knows a congressman, and that is your claim to status, right? So compared to that, like uh, the gym bro would, would ha actually have real status, because they earned this. I mean, knowing a congressman is not earned, well, I mean, maybe, well, well your dad knowing a congressman is not earned, I mean, your dad giving you money is not earned. But I think I would make some kind of a distinction there. Because there are people who are very useful, and they just happen to have stuff. And suppose, suppose you knew someone, like suppose your your partner was someone who just it just has stuff. But like suppose you 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 two lost that, and they would be completely useless, go complete that weight. But if they're just useful, then uh, well, I would value that higher. Of the male hierarchy over here. I have a celebrity in her Golden Globes dress. Those are people who have a lot of access to attention and support and money, and people do things for them. So that's why status matters. It makes life easier the higher you go, and it makes you more likely to survive, and it makes you more likely to have children who also survive. I'll use my life story as an example. Back in 2012, I just did not have that much going for me. But over the next few years, I started going out and doing things and working on myself, and people started being happy to see me and including me in things, and I developed a good reputation. And then we all remember 2020, kind of lost everything. So with that, I lost my status, and people didn't want to hang out with me, and people didn't want to give me money for any reason. I lost all.
of the ways that I got status, so I lost my status. And that maintained itself all the way up until I started home math. And then there very quickly has been a big jump to now I've got people in my inbox every day saying, I want to do this for you. I want to, I want to help you with something. And that's been very. Give me money too. I like money. Hmm. I'm, I'm kind of curious how COVID affected us going forward. I was affected too, somewhat. <laughs> I, I think it hurt my social skills a little bit, but like, it's, it's not a huge deal. Very good for me, but it's still context dependent. It's only this is only me on the internet. The other day, I went out to the store dressed kind of dumb because I didn't care, and uh, I got some looks like I was down here, and that's why people have. Yeah, I I think clothes kind of matter. I don't I don't care that much, but I mean, you don't want to look like you're trying too hard. You have to use these strategies because you're constantly negotiating for status uh, wherever you go in the context of where you are. And this whole chart, which is based on the whole everyone is a ten phenomenon. Cubans, man, the dumbest species is about the differences between the way men do that and the way women do that. And one of the ways that women do that, in my opinion, is to just say everyone is beautiful, everyone is a person. Yeah, but like, what else would you say? <laughs> now, this is actually an interesting concept that when you ask a question and one answer is favored, you're just going to hear that all the time. <laughs> Assuming they are just going to say what works best. So what the heck you expect to hear? It's like, you ask someone like how your dress looks, right? For example, what are you gonna say? It sucks, right? Are they gonna say that? And especially if you are not looking for an honest feedback, then they're just like, then you're just looking to for lies completely, some kind of fantasy that they are supposed to tell you. Yeah, and you might get mad at them for not telling it or telling it, but you want to hear the story. Is the perfect 10 and everyone's equally valuable in order to hide the ways that they jockey for status, whereas men just do it right out in the open. Let's get into the research. In a 2013 paper of this long name from Harvard, it says, from early childhood onwards, girls compete using strategies that minimize the risk of retaliation and reduce the strength of other girls. Girls' competitive strategies include avoiding direct interference with another girl's goals, disguising competition, competing overtly only from a position of high status in the community, enforcing equality within the female community, and socially excluding other girls. The writer continues that from early age, women clearly dislike group hierarchies while boys and men are okay with competing directly, and girls and women prefer to interact with same-sex individuals of similar status. This doesn't mean that girls and women don't care about status. For both sexes, high status increases the probability that one lives longer and so do one's children. The result of these two somewhat conflicting motives is that girls and women seek high status but disguise this quest by avoiding direct contests. So what does that look like in practice? Well, first of all, I put a, a green and always here because mid and low women are, are they're just always tense. They're always perfect and beautiful because if you want to hide your status games, you can never actually tell anybody that they're lower down on. It basically means you're gonna look like a fucking hedgehog from all the back steps. The hierarchy, except for women who are actually high up on the hierarchy, and then they are only tens when they are cooperating, which is why they use this cooperation strategy. You might have a, a really gorgeous, famous woman or woman who is locally high status saying, everyone is beautiful and perfect and we're all equal because she knows she has to say that in order to not be excluded by the armies of everyone else who are gonna demand equality. That's the game that they play. Here I have an upper mid level woman saying, you're a ten to a lower level woman. And what that means is, stay <laughs> acting stupid. That I. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you have to really consider that. that Especially when others telling you things you like to hear. Why are they telling that to you? I colored turquoise here for sabotage. And what that basically means is um, you should continue acting like you are higher up in status or attractiveness. Because if you do, then you're never going to find what you need from the social scene and from men. And then I will have more free male energy to get to draw something from. Here in reverse, we have a low status female saying you are a 10 from low to high. And what that means is, yeah, I know you're above me, but you're a 10. So I'm almost a 10. Everyone can tell that's that's the trick that's going on here everyone can tell where they are we look at them and we go how can you say you're all i'm not sure people can tell where they are <laughs> if you ask a random person they probably think they are like an eight or something i i don't i don't care that much about this rating system but i would my my perception would be that the average person is pretty deluded i mean the just considering yourself Evaluating yourself as based basically as what you did yesterday would be just such a rarity. People always have some delusional stories about who they are, you know, about what they can do, their whatever, some some bullshit make believe. Uh... You're all equal when it's so obvious that you're not, and we can tell who's up here by looking. Well, they know too. So one of the secret strategies here is if I play the game for you, then you'll include me. I rounded out the female side with good plain old delusion. I'm gonna marry a baseball player. Not just some outfielder, neither. <laughs> Delusion, she thinks she's gonna... Yeah, but people like to imagine that how cool they think they are in their head is reality. And uh, it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cold. If you just see yourself like, oh yeah, I was just the guy who like, you know, maybe did some work, watched some YouTube videos, and that's it. It's not super flattering.
athlete and she's not. I also have one of the more direct forms of female status. I've seen this before that people come to the point where they are basically staring at reality. But they, they cannot take it. And they just double down on delusion. And honestly, it's pretty damn cold. Status competition. This is the my boyfriend will beat you up. This guy is Ugh. being a jerk to her. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of status like that. But like, oh yeah, my boyfriend or my daddy or something like that. So there's nothing that they can do. But they just happen to know someone, maybe. And she uh, makes a threat in the way that men might get men directly in fights. She's saying, I am. But it's a kind of different for women, I would argue. Because if I started fucking Jeff Bezos, you probably wouldn't think that I'm much cooler, right? I'm protected. I am, I'm protected by the boyfriend who is coming, and that is a more direct threat, but still not the kind of directness that men engage in. Men being direct as they are tend to just, whatever level they come from, they tend to just kind of point out when a woman is way up high, they'll just go, that girl is a 10. But that, those are patriarchal beauty standards, because they... Those are... Pat but just based on what works, it always makes sense to say that they are 10 or something like that. <laughs> patriarchal beauty standards, because they violate this appearance of equality on the outside. Uh, right here I have the two of them exchanging... A yeah. On the outside. That's definitely a pretense. Uh, right here. Oh, on both sides. Here I have the two of them exchanging uh, nasty words for each other. That is an attempt to lower status as well. Uh, it happens. And elevate their own. Just reinforce their own um, beliefs about themselves. It happens across from men to women and from women to women and from men to men. I also have this girl saying the typical, you're going to make someone so happy today. This guy, which is. It just means fuck off. It's another way that women use this kind of appearance of everything nice on the surface when what she really means is you're not what I'm looking for. Oh, and of course we have the accusation. Whether or not they're true, those can cause a lot. You heard me? Yeah. That's brutal. Uh, damage to men's lives, I've seen that happen. And it usually happens impulsively. But that's essentially that's what it means. That they are trying to tear you down. But you can see this from guys too. It's just unbelievable. Like, you might just talk to them normally. And apart from that, like, at least part-time they talk shit about you behind your back. <laughs> Bastards. And their reason for talking shit about you is that... Uh, just minding your own business or something. A few years ago, we had that whole thing where they said you were not even allowed to ask about them. And again, these are just examples to help you understand the overall strategy, which is to keep your real feelings and intentions quiet and play nice out in the open. Men have a hard time understanding this because men will just say things like this out in the open. This guy. <laughs> My Pokemon Stadium speedrun is undefeated. Hmm. This would be a good example of local status. All right. But also something that people are not that interested in. So, I mean, the Pokemon community, this guy could be all fucking dead, right? Easy. And uh, I guess I should mention that, I mean, you don't really want to be competing in games where they're just complete make-believe and you're kind of like uh, coming in at the bottom. Like, even if you cannot improve your situation, suppose, I mean, it's not going to help your situation if you start sipping for like Elon Musk or something. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to make you sound kind of pathetic. And if you can join some kind of organization where you can be the like, total bottom bitch, for no reason, no, no gain. Just like maybe, like you can rise the ranks. I, it's probably, it's probably not worth it, right? <sighs> there are things that matter, and I, I think you should just admit to that. Like you know, like money and, and looks kind of matters. And you, you kind of care about it, but you probably shouldn't care about things that are just dumb. Because it's gonna look like this Pokemon Stadium, right? This is an ex excellent example. Yeah, you can, you can. Join the Pokemon State. You can do this just because you like it. But uh, you should join the Twitter status. Because some guy's going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. So good. So good. And like, you know, but for someone else, it could be like, okay, well, maybe it means something that uh, you know how to drive and uh, you own an expensive object. <laughs> but other than that, like, they may not care about it. This guy's trying to be as cool as he can and not managing. This is something that somebody actually said to me once. I Women are like peasants to me. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this a lot a little bit. But they try to tear others down to feel better about themselves. It's a little bit like Ace of Fables and like, you know, the, the grape is probably sour or something like that. Yeah. It's not like you got to think about this. What is he achieving? And pretty much nothing. It's just kind of like positioning himself as like an 11 here. I was like, oh yeah, they're all beyond me. That's why I'm not having them.
once. I did not see him talk to a woman the whole night, but he was really trying to tell me, yeah. But also, you don't have to be so salty about it. And if you have desires, it's better if you are conscious of them and you're not trying to suppress them because that's going to be just apathy. Or at least they should make you bitter. I mean, at, at that point, it would be better just to like, you know, like, you know, women's a bitches to me, like, whatever. I'm just going to play some video games, right? I, I, I would argue the, the bottom guy kind of has the right idea. Yeah, women, I make them work for my attention, but none of them were trying. So I made that a combination of a self-inflation and te <laughs> tearing, tearing down, tearing down women and delusion. Like no one's listening to you, buddy. And then this guy right here is doing the fragile ego thing. Which is not that hot, bro. Okay. She's not that hot, bro. This is the, that. Yeah, but what are you achieving with that? From the standard female delusion chart. So he's trying to make himself look cooler than he is, which sometimes works. Another thing I see from time to time is a, a guy who does not work out will find a guy who does and say, well, you must be a bad person. If you spend all your time in the gym, you must. Yeah, I heard, heard this exact thing before. Not be smarter. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. I, I work out in the morning. And when I do, I actually listen to books. Hmm. So I don't, I don't think the the gym bro who is a complete idiot as a cliche is a uh, well deserved if anything they might be making improvements in other uh, ways in their life uh, the only negative cliche of uh, the gym bro would be that someone who's like doing steroids and that that is just sad to see because like you joined the gym and that's amazing you just just avoid the juice and I, I saw a video where apparently chicks don't even dig it. You're basically just doing it for the other guys. And that the same thing applies to women as well when they go like super thin. Like the guys kind of like it when you're like 20 to 20, 25 BMI. That's, that's fine. You know, the guys are going to be okay with that. If you go below 20, you're just doing it for the other chicks. Mostly. Or something. That's a, a typical example of tearing down right out in the open. And here's a guy stating, I'm powerful. I know powerful people. <laughs> no, he's not powerful. He just... <laughs> Ed knows a congressman. People, if we get into some kind of That's also kind of weak, though. So it's not something that he has. I mean, you, you, can, you can easily lose your status in, in such context. So suppose, like, your, your claim to status is that you know the congressman. Suppose they, they fall. Then where are you going to be? Hmm? Suppose, I mean, this in this imaginary scenario, but otherwise, like, let's say that they drop like four points. It's like, oh no, that's congressman. Uh, I guess I don't know them anymore because they're not a congressman. <laughs> Something like that. Or like, I have money, but like, I don't know what would happen. I mean, it, it, it did happen in the past, like uh, in Europe, but where I was original form. I mean, it would not be a uh, rarity just to find like, you know, drawers full of money. Because money is supposed to, well, money was worth something, and they were like top of the hierarchy. They were like the the Mr. Rich Boy, and when money became irrelevant, they they also became irrelevant. They had really nothing, no no claim to glory. They were just useless. Without their money, they were just uh, I mean, basically just uh, a little bit better than a cripple. They were not unhealthy, but. They really had no, no claim to glory. And actually, that's very interesting because, like, if somebody's making, well, kind of like uh, making their living in, in parasitical ways, like, let's say, like, landlord, like, what are they doing? If you're a landlord right now, then you probably would be the, the one of the first to fall, uh, apart from the, uh, those who are sick already. So, suppose. We, as a society, had to decide that who's going to go into the nuclear bunker and it's only going to be a top 5%. Would you go by skill? It's some kind of conflict. The cops are going to be mad at you and not me. That would be a self-inflation. And then, of course, we have the top guy bragging about how I have all this status because I'm so awesome and you don't because you're not. So as you can see, men focus pretty directly on who is higher and who is lower and they just have open contests on the open. And they're not very conscious of this game that women play of keeping their problems with each other quiet. So I'm a 10, you're a 10, we're all 10s. It can mean many different things depending on the context. It could mean this is my friend, she's with me. It could mean everybody knows you don't have any pull around here. Here, It could mean I can't believe I have to deal with these people. It does not always just mean I'm deluded because I have too many matches on my phone. Yeah, I would argue that almost everyone is super deluded. <laughs> On my phone. So one of the things that I'm trying to show, the main thing I'm trying to show with this chart is that when you hear things that are not true being said by... Oh, uh, yeah, there is... Yeah, just uh, came to me. There's a good book by Bill Storr uh, called The Status Game. I would highly recommend that you read it.
I, a group of people usually starts with women, but men cooperate sometimes. When you hear them say something like that, I say, well, this is not reality. Men will often say, that isn't true, and they'll be logical about it, but that's not the point. The point is, are we all on the same page? Because if we're all working together and creating this, this sense of unity and inequality, that's kind of a pretense, isn't it? Then it doesn't matter what's going on behind the scenes. We all have a better negotiating position to shape reality the way that we want. So you shouldn't be asking, is this true or not, when that starts to happen. You should be asking, what are you trying to get away with that you don't want to say out loud? Watch the clip again. Scale of 1 to 10. So let's do that. 10. 10. 10. Billy Ray. I feel like I'm a 6.7. Why the f ever say something like Physically or over? So when you hear people start to say things that are obviously not true, uh, don't use logic. Just ask yourself, what's really going on here? My only suggestion would be that you don't play status games that are dumb. Only the ones that matter.